Lots of logo design beginners find it so hard to come up with a logo design idea. But the truth is, you have to think outside the box if you want to succeed as a logo designer. So in this video, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process on how to design a logo effectively. And we start right now. What is going on? My name is Dennis. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, in this channel, we help graphic designers find success in their career. So kindly subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified when I upload another video like this one. This is video one in this series, so stay tuned because more videos of this series will be coming up very soon. Okay, I will start by defining a logo. So what is a logo? In my terms, a logo is a graphical symbol that identifies a company's products, services, and values. Logos are not made to explain what a company does. It is made to identify and make a brand stand out. Most people mistake this by saying, My logo must explain all what my company does, so once anybody sees it, they will know what I actually do. But this is very wrong. It's left for you as a graphic designer to educate your clients on what a logo should do for a company. Go to the internet and browse related company logos and show them to your clients and try to convince them to see to your own perspective and mind you don't try to compel them to change their mind so you won't get your clients angry be like a teacher educating someone by so doing if your client is one who loves professionality they will have no choice than to give in to your advice do you know we can say our signature is our personal logo yes it's very true now there are five types of logos i would like to talk about and i will explain each of them vividly the first logo is symbol or icon this is simply a symbol or icon that represents a company or brand example is the nike logo apple logo mercedes-benz logo instagram logo as well as the pepsi logo Companies with symbols or icons can change the nature of their logo by adding textures and values to make it two or three dimensional without disturbing the original shape of the logo. I hate it when some designers call this stuff a 3D logo. Dear young designers, this is not a 3D logo. It is a mock-up used to tell your clients how their logo will look like if it is brought to life. It should not be used as a 3D logo. Let me show you. These are 3D logos, so please take note. Okay, the second on my list is the word mark which is simply a company's name. Now, the fact that it is a word mark does not mean you can just type a company's business name with any font on your computer. It should be unique and special so it can stand out. Word marks are typeface based logo that spells out the name of a company. The use of a typeface when it comes to word marks is very important as it does not only encapsulate the values of the company but should also be unique. When creating a word mark, designers tend to come up with a new typeface or readjust an existing typeface to make it unique. Small elements can also be added to make the word mark stand out and add some meaning. I would like to show you a couple of word mark logos. That is the Coca-Cola logo, the FedEx logo, Visa logo, as well as the Nestle logo. If you can mention other logos in this family, let me know down in the comments. And if you are enjoying this video, kindly like and share to other designers around you. Okay, let's talk about logo number three, which is letter mark or monogram. Letter marks are similar to word marks because it is also made out of a typeface, but this time it is with the initials of the company name. 
it is mostly used for companies with long names or names that might be pronounced wrongly. Famous letter marks include H&M, Electronic Arts, and IBM. Now, IBM stands for International Business Machine. It was designed by Paul Rand, a famous graphic designer. Okay, think about the HP logo. Do you know what it stands for? This will bring me to a Q&A. What does the initials HP in the logo stands for? You can type in the answers down the comments below while I will unveil the correct answer in my next video. Okay, let's move to logo number four. That is the combination mark. The combination mark is the combination of a word mark, letter mark, and icon. These logos are geofunctional, which means you can remove either the word or the icon and you still identify the company. Sure, you can see they still identify the brand even when part of the logo is taken off. The combination marks allow flexibility to use either an icon or a word mark. It is based on a company's choice either to use the icon or word mark and both will be recognizable. The icon can overlap or stand next to each other and that shows great versatility. Most logos that consist of a combination mark I can think of are uh, Amazon, Unilever as well as the Adidas logo. The last type of logo I will talk about is emblem. Emblems are mostly an icon or word marks made with a shield. If I should follow the KISS rule which says keep it simple stupid. Emblems do disobey this rule. Logos are supposed to be as simple as possible but emblems ignores that rule. But if well designed, it can be very unique and attractive. This type of logo need more research cause legibility is hard to achieve. Though emblems do add a sense of quality and formality to a brand, but it still looks traditional in appearance. Emblems are mostly found in formal institutions, government organizations, schools, sports team and even vehicles like Bentley logo and the mini logo. Other logos in this series are the Porsche logo, Warner Brother Pictures, Harley Davidson as well as the Manchester United logo. And I'm going to pause here for now. Kindly check back because I have more to tell you about logo design. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.